Hey there, I'm Dan Lopez, a Connect Solution Consultant at Aviva. And I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about Aviva Advanced Analytics. And if you're watching this, you've seen and heard about how Aviva Advanced Analytics can help with asset reliability and doing predictions and quality. And you're here to learn a little bit more. And specifically, what you maybe want to do is, you know, peel the covers back a little bit and see what goes behind some of these models and how do they work? And what's the process that you would go through to apply this to your own data? That's exactly what we want to show you today. And so we're actually looking at the results of a model right now. And um, what you can see here on the screen, I've taken a piece of equipment at my site, a particular pump that I'm interested in. And we've created an asset reliability model for that pump using one of our templates. And we're going to use classes to be able to roll that same template out to multiple different pieces of equipment. Let's show what that model's giving us. At the very top, we can see the live data coming from that pump, the different pressure readings, vibration readings. And down below, we see our first model output. First, Advanced Analytics has a digital twin builder, which is able to take that raw data and characterize different event states. So you can see at the bottom, it's breaking up all this data into different normal states and warning states that we want to be able to predict. And you can see here our model output. Specifically, there's an anomaly score, which is a measure of how different the current conditions are versus the safe, ideal learned behaviors and a probability of that event happening. And the exciting thing you can see here is that that probability is going up before the event happens. So yes, the model is actually able to look into the data and say, yes, uh, an event is actually going to happen and give us an advance warning. But let's actually make this a little bit more like operationalized so we can get results from it. If I scroll down a little bit more, we can say, not only is it giving you those alerts, those like those early predictions, but it's specifically saying, hey, right before that happens, these are the specific anomalies that are taking place. And look right here, say at our discharge pressure. It can say, if I scroll over to the right, our summarized value of discharge pressure is 148.1, safe range is 148.2 to uh, 151.9. So we're right at the upper end of that safe range. Ah, oh, this is a little bit risky. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can see, oh, we've got a mid-tier overall risk. Uh, let's go over and see which one is this. Um, individual uh, risk for this is high. Overall risk is contributing about like a middle amount. Let's go over to the left and we can see so this is our pump pressure delta so here again we're looking uh currently valued at 61.0 pound force per square inches uh normal safe range between 59.1 and 60.8 so these are the kind of things that an operator and engineer would of course be able to you know do if they could apply infinite amount of time always be looking at this piece of equipment always exactly catch every single one of these anomalies and always be able to set up this kind of characterization for every single average value, standard deviation, slope. But what we're doing is we're doing that for you automatically with a machine learning model built on things like neural nets and random forests to be able to do this analysis automatically. And what you'll see in a little bit is this is through a super straightforward user interface. So in a nutshell, not only are we able to characterize the events, we're able to give you probabilities, predictions of that event happening, and to help you understand why it's happening and what you do root cause analysis, we have the anomaly uh, history analysis right here. That's taking all that input data and letting you figure out, okay, what specific anomalies, what specifically is strange or unusual? And then you take your industry expertise and apply it to this and you're able to figure out, okay, what changes can I make about how I run this piece of equipment to prevent this from happening? Now, speaking of preventing it from happening, we also give you ideal running conditions here on the right. So we say, say for your uh, inboard temperature, yep, it's in a great range. Oh, your inboard Y vibration is an unprecedented high. Uh, your discharge temperature is a little bit low. Your pump motor amps a little bit low. It gives you recommended ranges that you can use to tweak and tailor your control parameters to keep this pump's operation within that safe range. And if you want to do that root cause analysis again and say, okay, this is going to help us going forward. Now let's look back in the past and see what could we have done. Here at this event diagnostics table. This is going to take all those anomaly events that you see up here. And for each of those say, like, when was that point of no return, that inflection point, like when the data could have told us that something was going to happen. So let's look right here at this one, at the very, very bottom. We can see that right before the value, uh, right before we have that outage, our X vibration uh, bearing inboard X vibration um, hit this particular point about a minute before 
60 seconds of advance notice. Yes, this is when we could have adjusted our thresholds or our limits on our like on-premises alarm system to keep this from ever happening. Um, but these warnings can be even further out. If I scroll down to the bottom again, look at a different one. Let's look here at this particular analysis. Uh, here, you know, we're at, gosh, like almost, let's see, this is 5.15. Okay, we're at three minutes for this one. Let's keep on going. Let's pick the one right above it. Let's see this one right here. Okay, here you go. Perfect example. 1908. Uh, we have the actual um, alert fire. Uh, we have it actually, it shows that, hey, um, you know, your value is going over this limit. If you look here, actually, now we have a debt like 916. So multiple minutes of advance notice before that anomaly ever actually happens. This is again the value here. You'll be able to do this root cause analysis, figure out which of your points are your key drivers, then also roll that into understanding, okay, like when are these going to happen? How should I tweak my control parameters? Things like that. You no, know, no, no question that people might ask is, how do we actually get here? And this is what we're incredibly excited to talk about. Like you can get to these kinds of monitors and analyses in a very short amount of time. The goal of this is to create a tool for industrial users who aren't here just to do research and open-ended exploration and find things out about their data. No, you need to make findings that you can roll back into your process and use to actually make changes to drive down costs, drive down risk. And that's why we're giving you experience where you can get started in hours and days and not like months and years. Let me show you exactly what we mean here. So first, the data that goes into that model is coming from Connect Data Services. You can see right here, Chemicals Pump 1, this is that exact same readings, original fidelity coming from on-premises, coming from my site right up into the cloud. Now, how did it get here? Fortunately, that's an incredibly straightforward process. We have off-the-shelf software agents, you can see right here, they're able to connect to on-premises systems, things like uh, Aviva Pi system. Uh, you can even do this from things like Aviva Historian or System Platform, or even things from like uh, MQTT broker or OPC UA server. So you can see it's as simple as downloading an agent that's installed in just a handful of minutes. And with that installed, I've got my server registered right here. I can go ahead and say, all right, if I want to send along my line one pump, I simply do a search from my Pi system here on the left, pick the data items that I want, and I'm off to the races. When I hit the little save button in the bottom right, that is when it synchronized up this particular pump and all of the data that came along with it. So short summary, the first step of getting the data up into the cloud, incredibly straightforward. Advanced Analytics works with this thing called Connect Data Services and Connect Data Services, one of its many capabilities is creating this seamless, scalable integration between the cloud and the data that you have at your sites. And in case some of you are saying, well, how do we get started with Connect Data Services? There's no RAM, CPU, cloud containers, all those things for you to manage and customize. You flick this switch. We're making it that easy for administrators. It's a modern SaaS platform. You turn on data services, you get that portal, and download the agent and install it, pick your data, sync it, and you have all the data you need for your models. But you know, how do you make those models? Great question, let's get to that next piece. We're back here in advanced analytics. And a super exciting thing about the way our workflow works is before you even get to making a model, there's an intermediate step and a super important one. What we let you do is first create the concept of a digital twin and why. So let me go before I created the uh, monitor here in the model for pump one. If I go to twins, you can see for chemicals pump one, got a digital twin created. Why is this step so important? Why is it so valuable for our users? Well, if you consider the alternative, if you're just applying models all over to your data, you have issues with governance and keeping all the models managed and keeping them standardized. We let you create digital twins that you can create as classes. Again, you can promote things to be a class up here. You can create classes of these digital twins for a pump, for a boiler, for a chiller, for a processing plant, for a water uh, you know, treatment facility. You can create these twins and that lets you standardize your models. That lets you standardize your thread calculations, like KPI calculations or event detection routines. You can standardize this. And so now instead of just applying models directly onto data, you have the intermediate governance and organization layer, which is incredibly useful to making this a solution that gives you value and doesn't add a huge amount of like administration or organization workload. So digital twins is an incredibly useful step. This step is also very important because it's where we can start doing a bit of data engineering. We can pick which of our many pieces of data from a piece of equipment we actually even want 
uh, synced into this uh, digital twin. I can say I've got 21. I can remove some if they're not relevant. Um, I can add filtering. I can segment my data. And again, this is super important. In the real world, of course, equipment will sometimes move between different states or it will produce different products. And you can apply that here without SQL queries or custom code. You simply specify which are like the input values uh, that contain the state or the system code or the phase. And that's it. Pick the tag, you're off to the races. You can pick a, a, the rate that you produce a product, if this is a piece of manufacturing equipment or a continuous process, if you want to do like rate-based calculations, like cost savings. And then when you're done, the process of creating a model is literally as easy as hitting create model. And here's where you see some of the exciting pieces about this. Again, we wanted to give you something that lets you get started quickly. We don't just generically give you a random forest or neural net or XG boost or anything. We say, okay, while you totally can build your own models from scratch, Right off the bat, what's aligned with common industry use cases? Do you want to do asset reliability? Or do you want to predict a certain property or an event? Do you want to detect anomalies in your data? Let's say you're treating a certain uh, uh, ingredient or reagent and you want to maintain it in certain uh, levels. Do you want to say, hey, let me uh, keep this within certain conditions. I want to be notified if there's an anomaly amongst this huge data set. Great. Uh, do you want to do energy optimization? Perfect. We have these common model templates. It's as easy as saying, I want to start asset reliability and go. That's exactly what I did right here. You can see I've got a predictive maintenance model using the asset reliability template. So if someone said, I want to make a model with, you know, for asset reliability for a piece of equipment, right off the bat, you're seeing you can practically do this in minutes and hours. You flick the switch to turn on connect, you install the agent, pick the data you want, zap. That data is synced up to the cloud. You go through here, you apply any of that uh, feature engineering, you uh, categorize it by state or by phase. You pick which tags you want to be in your digital twin, and then you click the add model button, and here you are. And here's again, on a really exciting piece, this is where we're taking those kind of nebulous concepts of machine learning and making them really accessible for users. If you want to add data, great. You pick what, uh, what event do you want to predict? I want to predict the state of this pump. Perfect. Um, what inputs do I want to put into it? My temperatures, my vibrations, my pressures. Excellent. You add all of that in. Do we want to segment the data? Do I want to add additional filtering? Like maybe if my temperature is negative, that probably doesn't make sense in this case, filter that. Or if my uh, RPMs are like uh, over 100,000, uh, let's say maybe the pump can't actually hit that speed. It's probably a, a data issue, so filter that out too. You can add all the filtering you want to prevent the model from drawing incorrect conclusions. And you can see right here at the end, it's going to give us a probability of the event occurring in an anomaly score, a continuous measure of current data versus the uh, trained safe ranges. And both of these are going to be saved in Connect Data Services so that they can be synchronized down, say, to something like a Pi system. So your engineers at the site can have displays and trends that now have like an, a probability of an event like happening, which would be incredibly useful for them. So they can just get these benefits without necessarily even having to see all how the tool works. But this is it. Like you configure the inputs and outputs of your model and you're done. You say, how much data do I want? 30 days, done. I accept all the other defaults. Um, say, okay, it'll suggest different time ranges for you. Do we want to uh, get a 15 minute forecast or do you want to uh, set it to zero minutes and do a retrospective analysis? I'll say, yeah, I want to get like a, a 15 minute uh, response. Then I'll go to evaluate. And this step we're super excited about. We know that a lot of, for a lot of folks, this is taking your data in a new direction, in a new place, and folks want to make sure it's reliable, trustworthy. The anal evaluate step here, this will make sure that if you made any errors in your filtering or you have incorrect data or insufficient data, it'll 100% catch that for you to make sure that you're actually getting a trustworthy result for all of your users. So evaluate incredibly useful folks who've never done this before. And finally, you just hit step, start training. That's it right here. This is how easy it is to train a machine learning model with Aviva. Folks actually practically want to get started. We schedule a two hour meeting block. By the end of this, you hit start training and you're good. You get the results. You get to see an explanation for how the model trained itself. You get to look into the predictive model. And then you get to hit operationalize and configure a trigger to execute every five minutes. And you're good.
And now what happens afterwards, of course, is it's going to start generating that probability for us that you saw earlier. But then it'll also generate these things called analyses. So if I go down to the analysis page right here, it'll generate different um, uh, like pre-built analysis visualizations to show its output. So it'll show, say, uh, drivers, like what are the, the factors that contribute to the behavior of this asset. It'll show us those ideal running conditions. This is where I got that visualization. Um, it'll show us the anomaly history. It's where I got that visualization too. And it'll, that trend of the anomaly score, the difference between good, uh, your safe data and the current values. Um, it'll show you all of these and more. And then these, you can simply hit three dots in the top right and hit add to monitor to add to one of those displays. And you can make however many different monitors and dashboards you'd like. Right under here, if I just go to views, it's very easy for you to just hit add view, create a new monitor from scratch, and create a new blank canvas for arranging all these different analysis outputs in exactly the way that makes sense for your users. So start to finish, this is how that's done. Um, you can even say, I want to go into my triggers. I want to take my 15 minute execution trigger. I also want to add a time trigger to do a retrain, say every, uh, you know, after every season, or you want to maybe an event based retrain trigger right here. Uh, if a maintenance event occurs and you do a full turnaround or a piece of equipment, yeah, maybe you want to retrain because it's now going to operate differently. Perfect. So those high level concepts of training models, retraining them, adding data, feature engineering, we are practically bringing them to industrial users in a way that real quickly lets you take the data you already have and get the benefits of machine learning. And coming right back to where we started at the very beginning with our monitor. For folks who are looking at this and saying, we have great data, we want to take asset reliability to the next level. We know that failures cost us this much per year in terms of hours worked, in terms of overall dollars. And if we have a tool that can take the data that we already have and give us that extra bit of advanced warning, or let's just do that root cause analysis and let's find specific anomalies and say, oh, this means we should change our maintenance or replace certain parts earlier. Yes, this would be worth it to us. That's exactly the story that's being told by folks who are practically using advanced analytics to incredible success. And so for us, we're incredibly excited to hear your thoughts and your ideas and how you could apply this to your pieces of equipment and your sites. Please reach out to any of us at Aviva if you want to continue this conversation. I happen to be lucky enough to be on that team of folks who actually works with folks to turn on connect data services, turn on advanced analytics, and help them pursue their first use case. So we're really excited to hear from you. If you have any questions, please reach out and we look forward to those conversations. Thanks a lot.